the 3HLS VY2HF. Copy FN03, hi Ken, copy Fox November 85, Fox November 85, over. November 8, Hotel Mike, okay, got you that time, Paul. Uh, copy Fox November 85, Fox November 85, VY2HF Lighthouse. November 4, Uniform Fox Oscar, Fox November 85, from v Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot. Kilo Bravo 1, Papa Victor Hotel, Victor Yankee 2 Fox, or Hotel Foxtrot, copy Fox November 85. FN42, thanks. November 8, Mike Sugar, copy Fox November 85. Echo 961. WB3CSY, Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot, Fox November 85. Copy FN10, VY2HF. K8 Yankee Sugar Echo, thanks John, Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot, Fox November 85. Uh, Fox Radio Hotel on Fox November 5-4, copy VY2HF, Fox November 8-5. Uh, can I have the first part of your call again? Whiskey 1, Papa Alpha, VY2HF, Fox November 8-5. Portable Fox Nancy 5-3. Thank you for FN 5-3, VY2HF. KL4, Fox Echo Golf, how you doing, Frank? VY2HF, copy Fox November 8-5. 7-3, Frank, thank you, VY2HF. Hi, Drew, KO4MA, copy Fox, November 8-5. Thanks, Drew, EL88 in the book, uh, VY2HF. Brent, VY2HF here. And this is the International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend. It's August 20th, 2016. And I'm here at Wood Islands, Prince Edward Island, along with Bernie Cormier, and George Dewar, Bernie from New Brunswick and George also from Prince Edward Island. They're running the HF setup and I'm here to do some satellite work. Here's a lighthouse behind me, hope you can see it okay. That's one of the lighthouses. And there's the other one, the one that uh, the guys are actually operating from. And here's some of the antennas. Nice vertical there. Another nice vertical there. We have a G5RV dipole, and over on that picnic table, which I'll be showing you in a minute, is my, uh, my setup for satellite. And behind me, you can see the Wood Islands PEI to Caribou Nova Scotia Ferry. Wood Islands PEI is the last ferry terminal and has been in continuous operation for a long time and still operates even though they opened the Confederation Bridge from another part of the island over to New Brunswick back, I think, in 1995. So as I make my way over to the picnic table setup, I'll describe what we have. I only have FM capability this trip, so I'm only going to be using the AO85 and SO50 satellites, which allow me to use FM uplink and downlink. There is a few other, there are a few other satellites up there that occasionally will be on the air. Lilacsat is another FM bird that. Uh, apparently it was active yesterday, and I'm not sure if it's active or not today, but we don't have any good orbits or passes over this area during the time that I'll be here. So, first I'll show you where we are. This is Grid Square Fox November 85 Papa Whiskey. I don't know if you can see it too well. That's my WAS equipped uh, Garmin GPS. It is uh, accurate right now to within two meters based on the number of satellites it can see, which is pretty awesome. My antenna that I'll be feeding with that setup is this arrow. It's a buy it yourself and then assemble it quickly type of antenna. And what I've done for this arrow in particular to allow me to have full duplex, in other words, being able to receive and transmit at exactly the same time, I've installed my little Yesu VX3R. And I'll put some headphones into that, which will look kind of stupid, but uh, it, it works really well. I listen to it with headphones, so while I'm talking with either the Linko radio or my other handheld, which is this uh, Yesu VX8GR, which is what I'll use for the SO50 bird, it allows me to hear my downlink audio, so I'll know when I'm pointing the hand pointing the antenna at the satellite, I'll know when I've hit the sweet spot, when I can uh, get signals up to and both down from the satellite at the same time. 
So that really helps me uh, find uh, a good opportunity to transmit. I'll also, because obviously <laughs> you have a lot of hands on the go, uh, you can't, you know, you've only got two hands. Uh, I've saved a little bit of space by strapping one of the radios right to the boom of the antenna. So if I'm holding the antenna, that's also holding one of the radios. The other hand has to be free to operate the microphone or the other radio. So I can't write anything down because I'm out of hands. So what I do instead is I have a little MP3 audio recorder uh, made by uh, iRiver, which has stood me in good stead for over 15 years since I got it on eBay for like 30 bucks or something. But this is great. I just hang it around my neck. I turn it on to record before I start operating. And then uh, afterwards I play back the recording to listen to what I got. The incoming audio that's going to my headphones obviously can't be picked up by the recording, so what I do is I say it out loud as I'm hearing it so the recorder will get the proper station identifiers and so forth. <clears throat> I'm just going to go over this way just to get a better look at the MV Confederation as it comes in. You'll see it docking behind me. It's coming in with a, a load of more passengers, probably many of which are going to Old Home Week celebrations. This is the last day of Old Home Week in Charlottetown. Uh, the big gold cup and saucer race is tonight. The parade was yesterday. And uh, there are eight horses vying for a pretty big prize at the racetrack tonight. So this is a, I wouldn't say it's the end of summer, but it's, uh, it's near the end of summer. It's harvest time soon here in Prince Edward Island. Well, it's a little bit later and I've uh, just finished a great run of satellites on SO50. Um, I used the uh, larger uh, 2 meter radio for transmit. 10 watts was good enough. I just set it at 10 rather than go to 50. I was planning 50 if I needed it, but I didn't need it. And I, uh, I worked a great run of stations. I got 11 contacts in a pass that the entirety of the pass was about 10 minutes long, but I didn't hear anything for the first three or four minutes of the pass. And then the fun started. I worked uh, Ken, V3HLS, Paul, November 8, Hotel Mike, uh, KB1PVH, N4UFO, that's Kevin, K4FEG, Frank, KO4MA, Drew Glastonbrenner, John Pape, K8YSE, I also worked November 8, Mike Sierra, WB3CSY, N2FRH, and Whiskey One Papa Alpha. And uh, that's pretty good. I think I made a few hams happy today because they wanted this grid square. They wanted FN85, which is uh, a grid square that lies mostly in Nova Scotia but must not have a lot of activity, especially on satellites. So the northern part of the grid boundary is very close to here and uh, I was able to uh, slide into FN85 as part of this lighthouse operation and have a little fun. Alright, I've returned home from what was an amazing uh, day of ham radio playing around in Wood Islands and I got a nice time lapse of the MV Confederation coming back in on its return trip from Nova Scotia, unloading uh, cars and passengers reloading and then heading back to Nova Scotia from here in uh, PEI. The um, the neatest thing of the day, I did manage to record it and I'll be showing it here shortly. The neatest thing of the day wasn't a satellite contact at, at all as it turned out. Uh, the neatest thing of the day was the fact that I managed to make a direct contact not using a satellite or using some sort of a strange thing to bounce the signals off of. I used a, an antenna, that, that one I showed you a moment ago, to point at the area of northern Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, and I made a direct contact on VHF, 2 meters, which is around 145.5 megahertz, with Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie. Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie is a de-expedition station located on St. Paul Island, which is between Cape Breton and Newfoundland, in the Atlantic Ocean. Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie is a group of mostly American uh, high-powered ham radio enthusiasts who have spent a lot of time and a lot of money to assemble gear and get helicoptered out to this otherwise deserted island and get it activated for the purposes of handing out contacts to other interested ham radio operators. They're on satellites, they're on all the high-frequency bands, and they'll be at that for, I think it's seven to ten days, uh, operating probably almost continuously. Uh, St. Paul Island happens to be, even though it's legally a part of Canada, it happens to be, for ham radio purposes, considered as a separate country. And hams collect countries and grid squares 
just like uh, Pokemon players want to add Pokemons to their Pokédex, or bird watchers want to find rare birds and log them, uh, if something is rare, then it's more valuable. And St. Paul Island is very rare. So it's quite valuable, and uh, it's uh, something that a lot of ham radio operators don't have in their logbooks. Anyway, so all the operators on St. Paul Island include this gentleman named Lee, WW2DX is his call. He wanted to put uh, the island on with satellites and in the VHF, maybe even UHF bands. He sent me a Twitter message uh, while I was trying to operate satellites from Wood Islands, and he asked on Twitter if it would be possible for us to try to make a direct contact between my location in Wood Islands and him on St. Paul Island. And I said, sure, let's give it a try, although I only have FM. I don't have single sideband or any other better modes for long distance and weak signal work. But he said, let's try it anyway. So he switched to FM. I put as much power up as I could using that Alinko 50-watt uh, two-meter rig and pointed the antenna at Northern Cape Breton, and he pointed his antenna uh, my way. Here's what happened. Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie, Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie, Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot, DY2 HF, copies you 5 9, uh, uh, unbelievably 5 9, in Fox November 8 5, Fox November 85, copy Lee, DY2 HF. Roger, Roger, uh, DY2 HF, Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie, very good, you're, uh, you're S1, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, at the end of your uh, Okay, Roger Lee, you started to fade there at the very end, but I uh, heard almost all of that. Roger, the FT897, you're sounding just great here on Peaks. Um, doing very well here in the Prince Edward Island, uh, Fox November 85. Thank you very much for uh, Charlie Yankee 9. Uh, it's a biggie for me on two meters, obviously, and I hope you're still able to copy. Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie, Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot, over. Well, as you can tell, sometimes I get a little bit excited. Um, it was... It was exciting for me to work uh, CY9C in the, in St. Paul Island. Had a blast doing that. And as a postscript uh, to that little video clip, several days later on the SO50 satellite, I managed to work them again. And it would count as a totally different mode of contact uh, working them on the satellite. So it was a Thursday night after midnight. The best satellite passes are going through in the middle of the night uh, lately, so uh, that was a good pass. There was only three of us on the air in that pass. Uh, the satellite was out over the Atlantic Ocean, so not too many people in the United States had access to the satellite because uh, it was below their horizon, which did me a lot of luck, actually. So I did manage to work CY9C on satellite, as well as that two-meter contact that you just saw from Wood Islands. They left St. Paul Island ahead of schedule. There was some bad weather moving in for the following uh, Monday, which was their original departure day. So they decided to leave early, and uh, they had some bad weather when they were there. They had to withstand a lot of heavy wind. Uh, one of the windstorms actually took down some of their antennas. And as you can see in this photograph uh, that they sent from St. Paul, uh, they had some you know, pretty unfortunate damage there that uh, limited some of their ability to get on the air. Despite that, they still worked over 55,000 ham radio operators on the high frequency bands, which is what normally we would call shortwave, as well as the VHF and UHF bands, uh, higher frequency work, and satellites, including the contact that I had with them as well. So I have Charlie Yankee 9 Charlie now in my logbook on two occasions, a two meter direct contact, which is probably the hardest to do, and the satellite contact as well. So I'm very excited about that. So that was the upshot of the Wood Islands uh, effort. Uh, George and Bernie stayed for the balance of the weekend and continued to work stations. I just came in for the day on Saturday and I left uh, even before supper time. After the last good satellite pass was done, uh, I had no other gear to help uh, those guys out, so they just uh, went and did their thing and I headed back home to Stratford. So I have a lot of fun in these uh, satellite contacts with this uh, little tiny radio here, this uh, Yesu 5 watts output. 
Um, in that Wood Islands uh, expedition, I talked to everywhere from Florida to Maine, uh, up and down the East Coast, Washington, D.C., Cleveland, uh, Chicago area. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have a little antenna in your hand and, uh, and this radio in the other hand and work uh, or talk to stations that are thousands of miles away using a satellite that's up in space, that's been up in space for several years now. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, one of the things ham radio operators do after these contacts are over with is they exchange confirmation of the contact because we can apply for awards uh, through the American Radio Relay League and other organizations. I have applied for and received an award for 50 megahertz contacts way back in 1989, I think it was. Uh, I got the VUCC, which is the VHF UHF Century Club Award. And they also offer the VUCC for satellites as well. So I'm starting to collect QSL cards. These are these confirmation cards afterwards. Uh, in the case of some of the stations I worked even in the Wood Islands uh, Pass, I've worked in them before, some of them. This is Paul, N8HM. Uh, he's in Washington, D.C. Uh, this is Rick, WB3CSY. I worked him at the Wood Islands effort as well. And I also talked to him prior to that. And my good friend Ken, V3HLS, uh, in Toronto. Uh, Ken and I have known each other for a long time now. He's a great guy. And Ken even likes to travel to different grid squares that are nearby the uh, well not even nearby he's planning to go to northern Ontario and and other places to activate or put on the air rare grid squares for the benefit of other satellite operators that are out there that don't have those grid squares worked I plan to do a similar thing too uh, near Tignish Prince Edward Island there is a grid square about a border that comes right in there just barely onto land for the grid square FN87 and as you can see in the map, Fox November 87, FN 87, is almost entirely over water. So the chances of a ham radio operator being there with satellite equipment is pretty slim. Uh, however, it does touch just a little slice of Prince Edward Island, and it also touches a couple of the islands in the Ile de la Madeleine, uh, which is part of Quebec that sits out in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. But as you can see from the map, almost all of the grid square is over water. That makes that grid square particularly rare. So what I plan to do in the next uh, month or so is to drive to Tignish, just a little north, in a place called Anglo Tignish, towards the, uh, the North Cape uh, area, where the grid square FN87 does come on shore. And I can stop on the side of the road, right on the grid boundary perhaps, build my antenna, maybe take the camera along, get the radio going, and see if I can hand out grid square FN87 to some uh, uh, other hams who are desperate to have that in their logbook. Anyhow, uh, that's just one quick snapshot of one of the things, one of the many things you can do with amateur radio. Maybe I'll do some more videos uh, in the future about ham radio and also AMDX listening. And uh, I already do my flying thing as well, so I will get a few videos uh, going here to help uh, the new exposed people to ham radio understand uh, our hobby just a little bit. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it, and I hope you tune back in again. Thanks.